you have had uh, an enormous amount of success in your life. You've had in incredible experiences, incredible adventures, but you started from a humble beginning. So I'd like to take it back and I do this for a reason. Uh, our audiences are, my audience, it's made up of success seekers, people who want to, to go to the next level in their career, want to build businesses, want to build empires. You're an empire builder. But the good thing about you is it started off at humble beginnings. You didn't, you weren't born with a silver spoon in your mouth. So can you take me back to the beginning? You know, where were you born and raised? Tell me a little bit about your parents and your upbringing, if you don't mind. Um, well, unfortunately, uh, both of my parents are deceased um, from an early age. Um, and I was raised anyhow by my grandmother. So um, those parents were kind of uh, in and out uh, of my life uh, in visits and things like that. So, but I had a stable, um, good upbringing by my grandmother who always had uh, a, a saying to lend to you, um, got her guns, baby, got her guns. <laughs> um, so uh, even though I, I uh, kept, I a toe into um, what was happening around me. Um, I was at church seven days a week, <laughs> um, you know, from three times on Sunday, uh, Bible study, whatever it is. So I had a, a strong and solid uh, upbringing uh, from my grandmother. Um, and all of my cousins, uh, this is a funny story, all of my cousins could preach, <laughs> sing, or play an instrument. And I used to be like uh, like the little kid, like, yo, I can't, like, I can't play drums. I love the drums. I um, I was never a, a good speaker, but I was, a, I learned that I was a good teacher because I could read something and then tell you like what, what it meant or whatever the case may be. Um, and my grandmother always being, um, one trying to find the positive and raising me would be like, um, well, honey, you know, your job is just to serve them, you know, help your cousins out, like, you know, make make a way for them to uh, move the equipment or, you know, get the money, collect the offering or whatever in church terms. But not knowing then that she was preparing me for uh, the gift that God would give me. And that's what a manager is. Service to the client, you know, making sure everything is done right. Um, and also it taught me that um, when I got to the level to work with uh, a puff that um, I didn't have to be able to sing. I didn't have to be able to play an instrument or as he would say, don't worry if I write rhymes, I write check. Um, and so in those days I could look back on that upbringing that it was just service to the people who had the gift. Um, and then able to find something outside of that. So I had a cousin that was, a, when I was young, he was a great choir director. And so I would be like, yo, we should, you know, talk to the Tri-City Mass Choir or something. Always trying to get him, you know, outside of the, the church that we got when I was in my uh, early team. But it was preparing me for the success that, uh, God was going to give me. And, you know, I never realized it um, until about 10 years ago. And it was like, wow, God knew what he was doing back then uh, in, in the preparation phase. But it was very important to be continually faithful that I would uh, be able to succeed. I would be able to change my life. But all of us, me, you, basketball players, artists, whatever you are, especially young black men um, and brown men too. Um, you, your whole life is not just about your success. It's about going back and take care of mom, grandma. Like my whole goal was about building my grandma a, a new house, something she, or, or, or getting her to fly apartment, whatever it was that I could finally say, yo, look what I did uh, for you. Um, and that's when you work your hardest when you're trying to reach a goal that you not only set for yourself, but you set for other people around you, those that you love. Um, so that was uh, uh, very important in my upbringing. 
Um, and ironically, three days ago, um, I got a telephone call and I didn't recognize the number. And most times I won't even like answer those calls or um, I let them go to voicemail. And if you really want to talk to me, um, you'll leave a message and I can identify who it is and then I can return the call. If not, you don't want me to know who it is. And so there's no need for me to return the call. But um, I called the number back. And as soon as the person started talking, yo, what's up? I was like, oh, what's up, Biv? I automatically knew it was Michael Bivens. <laughs> who, uh, this is three days ago. Um, and uh, I was like, um, hey, how you doing, man? Whatever. And he, he just uh, began to like, um, yo, what are you doing? This, that, and the third. And then I was like, uh, like, what made you just call me? He's like, did you send me an email by accident uh, uh, like a week or two ago? And I was like, nah, like, you know, I didn't uh, send you that. And uh, then he read me the email and it was so weird. Um, but yet, um, you know, I don't believe in, that God makes mistakes or, you know, things are uh, by happenstance. But it was an a email from somebody at the NBA to one of my business partners who also used the beginning of the email as Mike B. Not Mike B, the stylist that we know, but uh, my business partner and another business. And the NBA lady, um, I don't know how, but um, sent it to like the, the Mike B I was in business with. But when I replied, I hit Bivens. I'm sure that was what happened. Um, and so he was like, yo, I'm amazed at every time uh, I speak to you, you're somewhere else doing something bigger or better. Um, and the reason that that is pertinent is I... Uh, was spending uh, my young teens with Dougie Fresh in Harlem. And uh, Dougie Fresh was like, yo, man, I got these kids <laughs> coming down or, uh, you know, they they from um, Boston and, you know, they want to get on to Doug at the time, you know, used to have your bodies on, you know, that uh, line in one of his raps. And the kids wanted to get bodies. So they, they needed to go to uh, a store on 125th Street. And basically, uh, when they got there, Doug wasn't around. And I had to take them to A.J. Lester up on 125th Street. And at that time, A.J. carried all the colors, like mustard, brown, green. And the only people who were rocking them were um, Doug, Cool Mo D, and... Um, uh, damn, he going he would kill me. <laughs> um, um, damn. Anyways, uh, I'm, uh, it's killing me that I can't remember the name right now, but we'll come back to it. But anyways, it ended up being new edition, and they wanted a color of of Bali to match every one of the suit changes that they would have in the during the tour, and we became so cool, me and Biv, that. Um, when he came to uh, Washington, D.C., where an aunt of mine lived, uh, I was uh, backstage at the Capitol Center. And that night, Bill was like, yo, you always making sure we fly. You, you know, really taught me about Harlem. Uh, you know, like, you want to go to California? That and I was like, I I'm, I'm backstage at a concert. Like, what, 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 what do you mean? Yo, go get a bag. Meet me at the hotel. This hotel and we gonna go on tour. Literally, I- You're telling, you telling me it was that simple? Uh, I'm telling you that over uh, a couple of months of, you know, telephone conversations and like finding clothes for them and doing little things, uh, hustle moves um, for them. And Doug giving me that platform um, that within three months, four months at the most, when they played DC, so I, I had already come from New York, then they played Philly, and then they played uh, Virginia, and then came back to DC, something like that. And so when he was like, yeah, like you can be my assistant. Um, I went home and got a duffel bag and I never looked back. 
What's up guys? Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Truly appreciate you. If you like anything you heard here today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you know anybody that can benefit from this message, feel free to share. Peace and love.